Hey, what is up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to another Logic Pro tutorial. In this video, I wanna talk about sampling, specifically using Logic's quick sampler instrument to create your own simple sampled instruments. Now, if you don't have money to buy third-party uh, software instruments or sample-based instruments, and you still want to you know, have something that sounds unique and original and that you created yourself, Quick Sampler is perfect for this and it costs you nothing. All you need to do is grab some random items around your house and a microphone, and you can record directly into Quick Sampler. So we are truly living in a golden age of sampling where we can turn just about anything into a sample-based instrument. And just as a quick example, this is a quick vocal patch I made, and it took me about 30 seconds to do everything. It's literally a vocal sample that I recorded myself and a couple of effects and some careful looping. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to build a simple musical arrangement just as a proof of concept using random objects and my voice. I will not be using any other logic or third party instruments for this video. Before we jump into the tutorial, I want to quickly tell you about the long term sponsor of the channel, Boombox. Boombox is an exceptional resource for anyone in the music industry, from artists to producers, helping with collaboration and promotion. For the past two years, Boombox has been my go-to resource for centralizing all of my feedback from my mixing and production clients. You can upload any type of file, whether it's audio or a full DAW session, and get timestamped text or voice feedback. And even if your collaborators don't have Boombox, you can easily receive their files using a custom inbox. And that's just scratching the surface. With Boombox, you can create artist pages, manage contracts and royalties, share private or public playlists, and even collaborate with Boombot AI, your virtual co-writer. Check out boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so let's get started. Let's uh, go ahead and recreate that uh, vocal uh, sample that I uh, played for you earlier. So I'm just gonna create a software instrument track. I'm gonna load up Quick Sampler on that track. The great thing about Quick Sampler is that it actually has a feature, this record feature, where you can record directly into the instrument. So all you've got to do is have a microphone hooked up like I do, set your input, so I'm in uh, input one, you can check your signal level here, and then you can just hit the record button and sing or play or you know do whatever you, you want to do with it. I'm just going to sing in like a single note with a little bit of vibrato, and I'm gonna do it like in my falsetto range. Okay, so there's my sample. I can go to classic mode. Not so pretty right now. But one of the things that Quick Sampler does that's super helpful is it actually determines what pitch uh, you sang or played. So you don't need to like go and manually, you know, align the pitch of everything. Like it's it's already on the note it needs to be on. And what I can do is I can sort of trim up the front end a little bit, maybe trim up the back end a little bit. And now if I wanna use this for like a vocal pad or something like that, and I want it to just completely, you know, continue to uh, sustain out, what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna wanna do is uh, make a loop out of this. So to do that, you just click on the sample here and you'll get your loop option here. And then you just put this on forward, reverse, or alternate. I'm gonna put this on a forward loop. And then you can see that the blue range is the normal sample range. And then this yellow range is the loop range. So I'm gonna set the loop range around the vibrato area. So you can hear there's like a lot of like, you know, pitch interpolation 
uh, an extrapolation going on. Um, but really what, what saves these types of instruments are the effects. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the tape delay just for a little bit of like a little, like a little bit of a delay. I'll filter that delay. So things just linger a little bit. And then after that, I'm going to add a reverb. Uh, one of my favorite reverbs to use is ROM from Native Instruments. Okay, so let's record in a simple like chord progression here with this. Awesome. All right, so there's our first layer. We've got a nice little choir pad there. Let's uh, come up with something that's kind of glassy sounding. And I have the perfect thing, a wine glass. Okay. <laughs> I think we're gonna need to go up in the, uh, in, the, in the upper range here. I mean, look at that, like literally one little tap on a wine glass and I've got a, a full, you know, a new instrument here. Let's give this a little variety here. Let's turn on the filter. Let's make this a high pass filter. And I'm gonna sort of roll off some of the bottom. Maybe I won't use, a, I was gonna use a one shot, but instead I think what I'm gonna, I'm gonna do is just go to the envelope here and pull out the release time. So when I just tap a key, the sound sort of rings out a little bit longer. I like that delay, but let's make it a little faster. That's cool. So definitely made a lot of mistakes in there, but I think I'm just going to find one little spot that worked out. Let me think about bass and drums. Uh, let's see if that worked. I honestly don't know if that was worth keeping, but let's go down. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. My sub's rattling the room now. And just because I'm lazy, I'm not even going to bother playing in the rest of it. I'm just going to use that as my uh, starting point here. It's quantized to a 16th. Repeat that a few times. Join that together with J. And then we're just going to transpose these up and down. I'm going to try to add a filter envelope. Um, so you can roll up the envelope amount here. So what this means is this envelope is affecting the cutoff of the filter. So it's starting high and then it jumps down. So it gives a little more attack. Let's use our new uh, Chroma Glow plugin just to give this a little bit of, uh, I don't know, get juice it up a little bit here. Alright, 
I've got a uh, a cajon here that I'm going to totally uh, butcher the way you're supposed to play this. I'm just going to kind of hold this up here. Okay, so let's go to slice. Almost like we got two different um, sounds there. And one of the cool things if you use slice mode is that um, each individual slice will show up here in the step sequencer. If you only have one sample, there's just going to be one uh, one row. Okay, so I got a couple of sounds in there, actually. Oh, that's cool. clap I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do that and I'm gonna kind of do it a little further away from the uh, the mic to get some more of the room in there yeah if you use um, one shot mode this is great when you just have one note that you want to you know you want to play the whole sample there we go cool and this is simple this is just uh, on two and four Okay, some of these notes are a little little far off. So I'll kind of do some gentle some gentle quantizing on these, not 100%. There's my hi hat. Now, if you need to trim up the front of a sample to like a transient or something, uh, you can come up here where it says snap, and then you can select transient and note, and then that'll just snap right to that. I can add a little fade. Okay, let's do one more. I'm going to do sort of like a synth lead sort of thing. And uh, I'm going to try my damnedest to make my voice sound like a like a trumpet, like a something like that. Oh, OK. <laughs> let's uh, get rid of that little pitch drift on the beginning there. Let's add a loop to this. And actually, one of the things you can do is you can reverse the playback of the sample if you want. So it plays in reverse. Sometimes you get some, you know, different effects uh, doing it that way. And let's give this like a, a vibrato. So I'm going to use LFO 1. The rate I'll pull up around maybe 4 or 5 hertz. And then we need to assign this to the pitch. So I'm going to go to target and we'll select pitch. And then you have to pull out the amount here. Yeah, that's too too much. Let's go a little faster though. And then if you want like the modulation wheel to control the amount of the vibrato, you just set that under via. So just choose mod wheel here. And now I can control my vibrato with the modulation wheel. You do have to set a range for it though. Let's do something like that.
So there you go. I was able to build out a quick musical arrangement using quick sampler and uh, sample based instruments that I made all by myself. I'm going to leave you with a playthrough of the whole thing. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.